A few days ago, while I was trying to record for problem 3 of IMO 2024, which I just uploaded yesterday, I was trying to do the IMO Day 2 contest by myself, and I learned that problem 3 was not the only exceedingly difficult problem on the test. Problem 6, if you look at the statistics shown on the video right now, is equally brutal, getting around the same solve rate as P3. And when I did it, I couldn't solve it in time. It took me like 7 hours total to solve problem 6 with a really bad and messy solution. However, I have a friend who participated in IMO 2024. His name is Satoshi and he was representing Japan in the contest. He scored the 4th highest score in the world at 37 out of 42 total and he did score a perfect 7 on problem 6. So in this episode, he will be our guest lecturer as we learn from his thought process, the technical details in the solution, as well as the rough ideas, the structure that holds everything together. This is Free For All Episode 7 on IMO 2024 Problem 6. Here's the problem statement. A function f from the set of rational numbers to the set of rational numbers is called Akwazumian if the following property holds. For every rational number x and y, f of x plus f of y equals f of x plus y, or f of f of x plus y equals x plus f of y. Show that there exists an integer c, such that for any Akwazumian function f, there are at most c different rational numbers of the form f of r plus f of minus r, for some rational number r, and find the smallest possible value of c. We are going to try to find some properties about Akwazumian functions first. If we replace y with x, then we get f of x plus f of x equals f of x plus x, or f of f of x plus x equals x plus f of x, and therefore f of f of x plus x equals f of x plus f x. If we substitute x equals 0, then we get f of f of, f of 0 equals f of 0. We could also substitute y equals 0 to this, but we get this, which doesn't really seem that helpful. Another thing we could do is we could try to force things to cancel out. If we substitute y equals minus f of x, then this and this cancels out. So if we do that, then we get f of x plus f of minus x equals 0, or f of 0 equals x plus f of minus x. Minus f of x. The last equation is of the form f of something equals 0. So what happens if f of a equals 0? If f of a equals 0, then we if we plug a into this, we get f of f of a plus a equals f of a plus a. And f of a and since f of a equals 0, we get f of a equals 0. F of a equals a. So therefore, therefore if f of a equals 0, then a must be 0. Using this, we could delete this f right here and combine this. So f uh, x plus f of minus f of x equals 0 or f of 0. This result seems very strong. It looks like we could prove f of 0 equals 0 from it. So let's try. If we substitute x equals 0, we get f of minus f of 0 equals 0 or f of 0. If we substitute x equals f of 0, we get f of 0 plus f of minus f of f of 0 equals 0 or f of 0. But since f of f of 0 equals f of 0, then this simplifies to this. If f of minus f of 0 equals 0, then because of this, minus f of 0 equals 0. If f of minus f of 0 equals f of 0, then because of this, we get 2f of 0 equals 0 or is equal to f of 0. So either way, f of 0 equals 0. Uh, using, this, this, uh, using this, this equation gets a lot more simpler. x plus f of minus f of x equals 0. And therefore, f is bijective and the minus x is an evolution. Now we've got a very useful fact, x plus f of minus f of x equals 0. Now look at this equation. This claims that for every x, f of x plus x is a fixed point of f. This looks very strong, so we're going to try to find some properties about fixed points of f. Let a and b be fixed points of f. If we substitute x equals a and y equals b 
this equation, we get f of a plus b equals a plus b. And also, if we substitute x equals a into this equation, we get f of minus a equals minus a. Using these, we could prove that for all integers n, f of n a is equal to n a. If the only fixed point is 0, then since f of x plus x is fixed, for all x, f of x plus x is equal to 0, and therefore f of x equals minus x. And if f of x equals minus x, then there's only one numbers, uh, there's, there's only one, one number of the form f of r plus f of minus r, which is 0. So we could ignore this and uh, we could assume that there exists a fixed point other than 0. Next, we're going to uh, cancel out some terms like we did before. Uh, next, uh, we're going to substitute stuff and cancel out f of x. Uh, we're going to substitute y equals a minus f of x. And if we do that, we get this. f of x plus f of a minus f of x equals a, or a equals f x plus f of a minus f of x. We could simplify this left equation because minus x is involute and involution. So we could multiply both sides by minus 1, and we could move minus x to the other side. And since f of minus a equals minus a, this right hand side is equal to a. And this equation is obviously equivalent to this equation, so we could, uh, we could prove that this equation is true for all x and fixed points a. We could simplify this a lot more though. If we transpose some of the terms, we get x minus a equals minus f of x, a minus f of x. And once again, we could move minus f to the other side, and we get f of x minus a equals f of x minus a. We could replace minus a with plus a, and we get f of x plus a equals f of x plus a. This is useful because uh, we could now take fixed points out of f. We could use this to simplify this original sent, uh, simplify this original equation. We, we, uh, so we know that we could take fixed points of f out of f, and we know that for all x, f x plus f is fixed point of f. So we, what we can do is we could take fy minus uh, fy plus y out of this f and we get this and this f, these fy's and these y's cancel out and we get f of x minus y equals f of x minus f of y. We could do the same to the right equation and we get f of y minus x equals f of y minus f, f of x and therefore f of minus f of y minus f of x equals f of y minus x or minus f of x minus y and we could also say that f of x plus y minus f of x equals f of y or minus f of minus y because we could substitute y equals x plus y into these y's Now we have all the tools necessary to prove the upper bound of c. We're going to prove c is less than or equal to 2. First off, f of 0 plus f of minus 0 is equal to 0. Therefore, 0 can be expressed by, uh, as a form f of r plus f of minus r. We're going to use proof by contradiction to prove this. Assume 0, f of u plus f of minus u, and f of b plus f of minus b are pairwise distinct. We're also going to assume u and v are positive. Then we're going to take a common divisor of u and v, that is, we're going to take a positive rational number g, such that u and v are multiples of g. We're going to use graphs to visualize what we're trying to prove. So the first fact is f of k plus 1g minus f of kg, is equal to fg or is equal to minus f of minus g, which can be easily proved like this. So here fg represents this slope here, and minus f of minus g represents these slopes here. 
we're going to replacing we're, we're going to be replacing them with a and b because we're going to be using them a lot so the first theorem is f of k plus 1g plus f of minus k plus 1g minus f of k plus f of kg plus f of minus kg is equal to either a minus b 0 or b minus a this can be proved using the fact that this is equal to f of k plus 1g minus kg minus f of minus kg minus f of minus k plus 1g. Using this, we can also prove that for any positive node for k, f of kg plus f of minus kg can be divisible by a minus b. Using this, we can prove that there exists s and t such that f of sg plus f of minus sg minus f of tg plus f of minus tg is not a minus b0 or b minus a. This can be proved because if we take the maximum and uh, the minimum number of these two, then the differences of them would be at least two times the absolute value of a minus b. So there exists positive numbers t, s and t such that f of sg plus f of minus sg minus f of tc plus f of minus tc is not a minus b 0 or b minus a. We're going to assume s is bigger than t. This can be, uh, this can be rephrased as f of sg minus f of tc minus f of minus tc minus f of minus sg. Now we can uh, uh, prove a contradiction using these two facts. The first fact is this. Uh, this is a bit convoluted, but basically what it's trying to say is uh, it's like the differences of these two and the differences of these two are either uh, are one of these, the differences of these two, and the, the differences of these two are one of these, and so on. And the second fact we're going to be using is that f of s plus sg minus f at tg minus f of x can only take two rational values. We're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to uh, prove a contradiction using these. First, assume that s minus 1g minus f minus tg is not equal to f of sg minus f of tg. Hmm? Oh. If these, uh, if the height differences of these two are not the same, uh, then the height, uh, then the differences of those height differences will be either uh, would be uh, one of these. But. Uh, the height differences of, between these and these are not uh, are not are not one of these. So therefore, the height differences of these pairs, these pairs, these pairs, all would be pairwise uh, distinct. But that would uh, contradict this because the differences can only take two rational values. So therefore f of minus f of s minus 1g minus f of t minus 1g is equal to f of sg minus f of tg we can be keep doing this again and prove that it's also equal to f of s minus 2g minus f of t minus 2g and so on so we, we can prove that f of sg minus f of tg is equal to f of minus tg minus f of minus sg which would be a contradiction because these two are different. Also, we're going to find a construction for c equals 2. Previous, previously, we did assume that there was fixed points other than 0, so it's safe to assume that every integer point, uh, every integer is a fixed point. We also need to note that uh, if we fix y, then this function can only take two rational values and also this which means f is bijective and is 
symmetrical about the y, uh, y equals minus x line. Now if you play around with this, then you might find this solution, fx equals 2 floor x minus x, and this actually is an Aquilonian function. So if we take r equals 0, for example, then this takes the, val uh, this takes the form, uh, value 0. And if, it, uh, if r equals 0 0.5, then this takes the value minus 2. So clearly, c equals 2. Uh, and so therefore, we found a construction for c equals 2. And the answer to this problem is What I learned from this problem, or more precisely, what I learned from his solution, is that while visualization is a powerful tool, it does not solve everything. Sometimes in algebra, you need to switch between different types of intuition. Like on certain steps, he used algebraic intuition and tried to match terms together, finding the inverse of f, believing that it has to exist. But on some steps, he drew a graph and used visual intuition to make his way throughout the problem. And this kind of switching between intuition types is a really common theme in algebra, but not every problem can demonstrate it as well as this problem, which is why I find it really instructive. So the takeaway from here is that visualization does not solve everything, and you need to switch between several different perspectives and choose the tool set that matches the problem best. Thank you for watching, see you guys in the next episode, and thank you so much to Satoshi for helping us with this video.